Moving right along with the show and into the second topic, more quarterback contract extension talks on today's show, this time focusing in on Trevor Lawrence and his contract negotiations with the Jacksonville Jaguars. This offseason, the Jaguars picked up Trevor Lawrence's fifth-year option um, along with Travis Etienne, and Lawrence will actually be playing on the last year of his rookie deal before he plays on that fifth-year deal that the Jaguars picked up. So there is still room there to not have to do an extension this offseason, but according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler, as he reported this past weekend, the Jaguars and Lawrence are in contract talks over an extension that would pay him around $50 million annually. The totality of the deal and how many years it will be is yet to be disclosed, but that is the supposed amount that he'd get per year. $50 million isn't isn't the highest paying, won't reset the market, but it is certainly interesting because it now pops up the question of, you know, for me, is $50 million enough for Trevor Lawrence as an extension? Um, it seems like every contract extension that happens recently now is close to resetting the market or does reset the quarterback market. We haven't had one of those deals in a while. Joe Burrow is still the highest paid annual paid quarterback in the NFL, earning $55 million per year. So deals have come close, most notably Jared Goff getting his extension uh, recently. I forget how many years it was, but he's getting 53 uh, million dollars per year, make, making him the second highest paid quarterback in the NFL on a year to year basis. So that could be what Trevor Lawrence follows up on. You know, 50 million compared to 53 million. Is that how people thought it would play out? You know, that's a question I have in mind. But going deeper into this, into the facts about the story, Trevor Lawrence spoke about his contract negotiations um, a little bit last month, to which he said, I love where we're going as an organization, and I feel like I'm just getting better every year. My best ball is definitely ahead of me. So from that standpoint, obviously, yeah, that would be great. Referencing a contract extension would be great, obviously. And what he pointed out in his statement, um, saying that he just feels like he's getting better every year, you look at the trajectory that he has gotten through, um, through his years, in his first year getting drafted to the Jaguars, obviously, with Urban Meyer there. I'm pretty sure everybody knows how that season went, not just on the field, but off the field. Um, yeah, with Urban Meyer, that was never really going to work uh, from the moment it all started. That was a bad rookie season then. The, he made his first Pro Bowl and was played very well in 2022, won the AFC South Division as well, and also made the playoffs and had that great comeback win against the Los Angeles Chargers in the wild card round before getting eliminated in the divisional round. But to follow that rookie season through all the twists and turbulation that he had to go through and have the year that he did in 2022, I think says a lot for him, but then again, in 2023, you saw the start that they had. They were actually the number one seed in the AFC for a while to start the year. And then it started slowing down a little bit. Then you had to deal with injuries. And they lost, I forget how many games towards the end. They might have been their, They might have lost six out of their last seven or six out of their last eight or something like that to miss the playoffs completely. And that recency bias, obviously, again, stays in your mind a lot longer than all the success that he had in 2022. With a supposed better team in 2023 also doesn't help his case. So there is some good and there's definitely some odd plays, some odd years with Trevor Lawrence in the NFL. But mostly, personally, I think it's been not as you would like a number one pick to play, obviously. Because when you draft the guy number one overall, just look at how you, they the media and everybody talks about Caleb Williams. You know, generational, much like they did with Trevor Lawrence. Um coming in, changing an organization. And I think Trevor Lawrence has done that to some extent, but at number one overall, you know, I think most people, and I don't think they're crazy for doing this, is they think, not MVP conversation, but sort of like CJ Stroud had his rookie year. I think people tailor it more to those expectations, and it is fair, not fair, realistic, unrealistic. You know, that's for anybody to make that determination. But when you're getting drafted that high, for me, I don't think it's that wild, out of the realm of logic to think that if you're the number one pick in the entire draft to be in that sort of situation, in those sort of conversations. And of course, it all depends 
on the situation that you get drafted to. Like I just mentioned with Urban Meyer being there and the Jaguars, it didn't really work out for Trevor Lawrence. But with Doug Peterson coming in, it has taken a little bit longer for them to be around the playoff mark and really be a prominent figure. But I like the direction that Doug Peterson has them going. This next year, I think, will be huge, especially if they get to this contract extension, which is the main topic on today's segment. $50 million annually for him. If he does get that, um, it would make him the sixth quarterback to be paid at least $50 million or more in the NFL. And again, around $50 million for me as my final verdict seems like the right amount for Trevor Lawrence. You know, like I just listed off, he hasn't done enough to merit resetting the market or being the second highest paid quarterback jumping over Jared Goff um, to where he has been number one overall pick taking the Jaguar from where they were to where they are now along with Doug Peterson and showing that growth and development like he pointed out in his statement I think he does deserve to be paid among the top because in all honesty if he wasn't on the Jaguars and the Jaguars were dealing with any other quarterback um, that they might have picked up through free agency or try to trade through and just sort of try to put a bandage over that position, I think they'd be in a much different spot than they are now. They have their quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. I believe in him, but seeing some of the negatives and seeing some of the positives as well, I think $50 million is the sweet spot around um, what you'd want for Trevor Lawrence based on what he's shown you right now. And also, it is interesting because this extends further to all the other quarterbacks trying to get an extension you know if the Jaguars do pull this off they not only would have jumped Dak Prescott obviously because that is still the ongoing saga but like we talked about last week Tua Tungavailoa looking for a contract extension um it was reported I think today that they've had had those discussions and that Tua actually rejected the first offer from the Dolphins so that's not a great sign but if say Trevor Lawrence jumps to a jumps stack and also Matthew Stafford's in that boat as well as um, forgetting the name Jordan Love is in there but he just became extension eligible but you know he is in the realm of starting to get those negotiations going but really the main three are Dak um, Tua and Matthew Stafford also as well looking to get a contract extension to assure himself some more guarantees past 2024. If Trevor Lawrence now jumps those two, I think it could get very interesting for the Dolphins, not only because Tua has already reportedly um, rejected their first offer, but also with the Cowboys. How does that figure in uh, to their plans on trying to extend Dak? Maybe CD now jumps ahead of Dak. Um, if they wait any longer the price could go up more and more maybe they figure extending cd is in their best interest at this moment because of how the market is going and then maybe they get lucky in free agency probably not but that is something um to take into consideration when trying to extend your quarterback it is just becoming a race to see who gets their quarterback extended the quickest and the jaguars are on it right now doug peterson also had some comments today that um their general manager and Trevor Lawrence's entourage are also really trying hard to figure out an extension. So it seems like everything's trending in the right direction. And if they do get it done because they picked up that fifth year option, they would have that extra year as a bonus onto however long they figure out the extension to be. So say they have a four year extension, they still have that fifth year option there. So it really turns out to be almost like a five year deal, sort of like the Devontae Smith deal when they picked up his fifth year option and then they extended him three more years. I think that's a great way of going about it. If you have that extra year, you might as well throw it on there and have the extension after that. Keep him on the team a lot longer. But I anticipate this probably getting done in this offseason. I would say, you know, it is a report right now that they're in the talks of getting this done. But I think a lot of people didn't expect it to get done this offseason. But now with how positive it seems like it's going, uh, Doug Peterson com commenting on it recently, or just today, I should say, at the beginning of their OTA uh, portion of their offseason. It seems like it's trending in a more positive direction than the Dolphins and the Cowboys that just seem to be inactive right now in any negotiation talks at the moment for their quarterback. So let me know what you guys think again in the comment section. Do you guys think $50 million is too much, too little, too little for Trevor Lawrence? 
um, and whether or not the Jaguars will get it done in this offseason. Leave all your thoughts in the live chat box or also in the comment section after this episode is finalized. But in the meantime, we will move on with the rest of the show. We'll talk about the Eagles and the Cowboys matchup not being on primetime this year. Stay tuned to find out my thoughts on that and also talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers schedule in 2024 and how difficult it is in their final eight games. Plus, the Ravens, another AFC North team, not happy with their overall schedule as well in 2024. Stick around to find out more details on those stories. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> 